a lot to talk about. Let's bring in former rocket scientist and editor of nasawatch.com, Keith Cowing. Keith, this was a complex, challenging mission. Things can always go wrong last minute. Explain to us why this is such a big deal. Well, to use an old line, this is exactly rocket science. It's not easy. You need to practice. And the one thing that India did was methodically learn from one mission to the next to succession, successful launches and landings and crashes, like China, how to get to the point where you can do all this difficult stuff and get the fancy spacecraft on the moon to do science. So it's not an easy achievement up until now. Uh, it's interesting that China is the first uh, country to land on the far side of the moon, and India is the first country to land at the South Pole. This isn't a U.S. or Russian thing anymore. So India tried this before. I believe in 2019, they failed. And just in a, sh a short, few short years, you've got this. That is remarkable. What did they learn in this process? What was the... Go ahead. Well, to a certain extent, you could say, well, other countries have done it before. Why do it again? Well, we have far more sophisticated uh, spacecraft and systems these days. And the, the, the intellectual capital of, of India, of China, and other nations is substantial now. So you've got more capability now to learn how to do things. And it's being demonstrated by the fact that um, on their second attempt, they landed. Uh, it's not always what you get with the uh, U.S. and Russia. We crashed a lot of things first. <laughs> why, Keith, why is this area of the moon, uh, the south pole of the moon, why is this so exciting? Well, first of all, it's never we, we've never been there. So that's the most important thing. But the second thing is, as was, was mentioned in the introductory piece, there may be, or we actually think, there's water ice down there. And if you want to go to the moon to stay for long periods of time, you've got to either bring everything with you or, in this case, find it there. Water can be split into hydrogen and uh, uh, oxygen for rocket fuel, but it can also be used as atmosphere for you and I to breathe or water for you and I to drink. So if you want to plan to go to other worlds like Mars, you really need to kind of figure out how to live for a long time in the moon. And that's exactly what these resources, the water at the South Pole, could give us the capability to do. So what can we expect from this mission the next few days? I believe this is a two-week mission. Uh, yeah, it's one lunar day, although usually uh, you, you hope that a, the spacecraft will wake up again. You have two, day, two weeks of very hot temperatures and then two are very cold. But during the two weeks where they have the sun and solar power, the rover will be doing a survey around the landing area. The, rover, the lander itself will be looking at the surface and hopefully in this two-week period, they'll be able to determine whether there is indeed water ice in the near surface at the lunar south pole. And Keith, what can other countries like former Soviet Union, Russia, China, United States, what can they learn from India watching this mission? Well, it's interesting. Luna 25 uh, crashed. Uh, that was a mission that Russia had tried to launch for t several decades. They had not done so in 50 years. And so, uh, again, I think maybe they thought, well, we've done this before, and usually there's a hubris that comes with, you know, thinking you already have it all in the bag. Whereas, again, with India and China and some other emerging space powers, practice does make perfect. You've got to do this a lot. And everybody should go to the moon, which means everybody needs to start practicing how to land on the moon. All right. With that, we'll leave it there. Keith Cowling, thank you very much.